Welcome to the September 15th, 2020 planning board meeting for the town of Cape Elizabeth. As a result of the COVID-19 virus, the planning board will conduct the meeting via remote access as provided by Maine law. The planning board will use Zoom meeting to conduct the meeting and to allow the public to remotely attend and participate. Zoom will allow all planning board members, applicants, and members of the public to hear all discussion and hear votes, which will be taken by roll call as required by law. Um, so the first item of the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any uh, corrections, questions, or comments about the minutes? No. Can, can I have a motion, please? Motion, we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Second. Jonathan? Sorry. Had a yes? Yeah, that was a second for me. Okay. <laughs> Maureen, please take a roll call vote. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Sh Do excuse me, Mr. Curry. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes, motion passes. Okay, the next item of business was going to be 19 Fessenden Road private access way. I don't know if you all saw the email from code officer uh, Ben McDougall. Apparently there's some question about the date of when the lot was formed and as to whether or not uh, that would qualify it as a buildable lot. Um, Maureen, do you want to uh, add anything to that? Um, just to say that uh, I said it was buildable last month based on information that does not seem to be true anymore. So yes, that is the status. Um, based on the fact that there is a big question about whether it is a legal non-conforming lot, uh, the applicant has requested that this be tabled. The, the okay. one option the board has is a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. If you wanted to hold the public hearing and then table it, you could do that. It's up to you. Okay, do you see any uh, participants who wish to take part in? Well, let me just open it up. The meeting will be now open to public hearing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, public comment. So it looks like Andrew was in the oh, crowd. There's Andrew. Okay. I found him. All right. Is Mike, there we go. Hi, Andrew. Sorry, I don't seem to be getting, I get like half of the invites for panelists and so I'm not Am sure I what's in going your on there. Spam box, Andrew? What's that? Am I in your spam box? I don't know. I got the one for next week, but I didn't get this week apparently. I, I really don't know what's happening. It's I get tons of emails from you, Maureen. No, no worries there. You're definitely not being spammed. I mean, it would be okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Maureen, do you see any participants wishing to speak on this? Well, the, the applicant's representative uh, is here. If we want to let the applicants speak for a moment and the board then hold your public hearing and okay, and let's do let's do that. All right, I'm going to um, promote Julia Frederick to panelist. Hi, Julia. Mic on. Julia, you're muted. You're muted. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, just to introduce myself, I am representing the owner, uh, Paul Stewart, of the 19 Fessenden Road lots. My name is Julia Frederick, landscape architect with Mitchell and Associates. And that is correct that our client requests to table this issue until his lawyer can do some more research on the original deeds. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, so I'm going to open the meeting to public comment. Maureen, does, do you see anyone out there raising their hand wishing to speak? 
Um, at the moment, I don't, but I guess if we just want to give them a minute, anyone who would like to speak can um, raise their hand and then they can speak. Can I just ask one question on this? Hold on. Um, no one's raising their hand. Okay, public uh, comment period is closed. Go ahead, Jonathan. I just, if we had a, well, obviously we just had a public comment hearing, but does that limit if um, the applicant brings us forward for having another public comment hearing? Uh, through the chair? I don't believe so, but Maureen? Yeah, you, you, can, you can provide an opportunity for public comment at every meeting. Um, but this would mean that we don't have to send out a notice again that says there's going to be a public hearing. Okay, I just, I, I, in abundance of caution, my opinion would be that we do send out, if the applicant does come forward with this again, that we do send out a notice for public comment because I just don't think that when the applicant's saying I want a table because of a issue with regards to the lot, we're really not having a fair process or we're not having the process as it usually would go out um, and so I don't think, I mean, it's just my opinion on that, but I'll leave it up to anybody else. Joe, Sorry. I'm happy to do that for the next time the applicant appears before the planning board. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So I need, uh, Peter, were you raising your hand? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, just, just to clarify, Maureen, I think what we're doing here is really hitting the pause button on this application. <clears throat> it's it's sort of a uh, a fork in the road. Either the lot is conforming or not. If we if it's determined it's not, then the subject is closed. If it is conforming, then we're back into the the substance of the application. So, I think Jonathan is absolutely right that uh, if this comes before us again, the public should have an opportunity to comment, and it should be noticed for that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. Does everybody else generally agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Julia. Um, can I have a motion to table, please? Would you like a motion? I'll make it. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Paul Stewart for a private access way permit to make an existing lot located at the rear of 19 President Road buildable be tabled. Do we want to say a specific meeting or to a future meeting? I think a future meeting. Be tabled to a future planning board meeting. Second. Second. Okay, Maureen, take a roll call vote, please. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you, Julia. Thank you, everyone. Okay, the next item on the agenda. Oh, hold on one sec. Um, the next item on the agenda, Two Penguin Properties LLC is requesting site plan review of a mixed use building with 19,020, I'm sorry, 1,920 square feet of short term rental on the ground floor and one residential unit on the main and second floors and amendments to the Tarbox Triangle subdivision located at 14 Hill Way, which require review under section 19.9 site plan regulations and section 16.25 amendments to a previously approved subdivision. So let's begin by having the uh, applicant introduce the project. And we are going for completeness at this point, correct? Yes. And uh, so first of all, I just want to apologize to Zev for cutting him out of the loop in the last meeting. Um, that certainly wasn't intentional. We're all just getting used to the Zoom process here. So um, we will 
make a giant effort not to have that happen again to you or anyone else. Um, so I notice uh, your mic is off, Zev. Do we yes, I'm here. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. I have it muted. I believe I believe uh, Rick is going to be taking point just for the updates on the submission. Thank you. Okay. So go ahead, Rick. Yeah, thank you, board and, and Mr. Chair. Um, we're uh, we're happy to be back in front of the board with uh, with a uh, revised submission. And uh, essentially, we we heard the comments and the concerns of the board at the at the previous meeting. Uh, have returned the, the major change being returning to the um, short term rental use on the first floor. Um, other other notable changes to the uh, to the materials in front of you um, would basically be responses to the uh, the town engineer's comments uh, on uh, on technical items and uh, so we're we're excited to to uh, sort of proceed to uh, a review of completeness. Um, we'd also uh, like to request a few housekeeping items. Uh, one being if it's if it's uh, um, it's uh, an appropriate time frame, uh, a formal request that the board consider an expedited review, um, and this is basically uh, in consideration of of where the project sits uh, in relation to a potential construction time frame. Um, and uh, uh, our our hope for the meetings that we can get through a, a completeness, a discussion of. Um, uh, uh, substantive items regarding the the review and potentially a uh, get to a, a finding. Um, I'll also note that to aid um, in the discussion uh, of the of review items, um, we uh, uh, the applicant has has submitted a response to the staff memo uh, for this meeting, and um, uh, so it's it's it was submitted uh, sort of nth hour. And, uh, and earlier earlier today, and maybe maybe in your possession, I don't know if it's uh, the pleasure of the board to have it in the record, then that's fantastic. Um, if not, those will be kind of our our um, uh, our playbook uh, reading points for uh, point by point, kind of through through the staff memo. So I'm going to skip by uh, uh, sort of uh, a review of the project site and the. Um, kind of the proposed infrastructure because I think I think we're all aware of what this this project is uh, unless you have specific questions for us um all right uh one thing I was thinking about earlier today is we heard a lot about this project uh I think we're in a position here to uh, determine whether it's complete or not without much discussion um does anybody have any questions pertaining to the issue of completeness here? All right. Um, then I'm going to open up the meeting to a uh, public comment on the completeness of this uh, application. Maureen, do you see anybody who wishes to speak? Uh, right now, if anybody wants to speak, they need to use the raise hand function. I don't see any hands up right now. Oh, one just went up. Okay, and remember, this is on the issue of completeness of the op application and not any issues of substantive uh, nature. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and have that person speak, please. Hello? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, I just would, for this project, I think, you know, it fits in with the other properties that are in its area. And uh, in terms of what would go in there, it's, it seems like it'd be in middle, next to a middle school rather than like a restaurant or a pub or something like that. That's my only comment. Okay, we have your, thank you. Your name and address, please. Yeah, it's Christina Krakalici. It's not in there. Um, and my address is one young lane. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, 
All right, so I just discovered I can see the attendees too. Did not know that. All right. Um, the uh, public comment period is now closed. Um, would anybody like to make a motion on completeness? Do I need to make it? Oh, go ahead, Jim. Yes, Jim. Okay. Um, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of two penguins, two penguin properties LLC for site plan review of a mixed use building with a 1,920 square foot short term rental on the first floor and one residential unit on the second and third floors and amendments to the Tarbox Triangle subdivision located at 14 Hillway be deemed complete. Second. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, please take a roll call. Uh, Mr. Bedensky? Yes. Mr. Curry? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Ms. Jordan? Yes. Ms. Kubler? Yes. Mr. Sarbeck? Yes. Chair Shalott? Yes. Okay, um, next item here is, uh, we've heard quite a bit about this project. Um, I'd like to decide, I think we have enough information to decide if we want a site walk and uh, public hearing. Um, uh, does anyone have any comments or the, on that? Is there anybody who feels we don't need a site walk? Is there I anyone? Would, I would like one. <clears throat> also. Okay. Is it unanimous? Jonathan, Daniel? Yes, yeah. please. Yes, I think a site walk would be good. Okay. Yeah, fine. So we're going to need a site walk. Can I just ask one question? Um, Maureen, did we receive the letter that uh, Rick had just notified us about? Did that go out no, to the I haven't forwarded to you anything today. Okay, because I couldn't find it, so. I couldn't see it either. Okay. Rick, when did you send that? Rick, your, your mic. Your mic. Your microphone. Apologies. Uh, somewhere around 6 o'clock. So oh. At, oh, yeah. I said nth hour. Meant nth hour. <laughs> that is definitely the nth hour. <laughs> that is the nth hour, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to resend to whomever I need to. And um, if we can digitally put that in, uh, in your court. Yeah, I can forward it tomorrow morning. Or if there's any, con if we need to converse on any of the items, we'll simply be referencing that letter over the next, uh, you know, over the, the point of this conversation. You know, I do commend Rick. It's a pretty thorough point by point um, description on what the project is involved. And, you know, he turned that around in, in less than 48 hours in terms of business days. And so I, I am thankful that he, he did that as quickly as he did. Um, you know, we did get our feedback from the town, I think the middle of the day on Thursday. So, you know, I, I do applaud him for for being as quick to putting this together as he could. Uh, the reality is we, you know, we simply can't, I think this, it's a pretty extensive description. Um, and so to, to do that correctly and with the detail required for the, for the board, that's appropriate. You know, I think it was a pretty succinct turnaround. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll all review it uh, when we get it. Um, so I'd like to start this similarly to how we, I started the last project in the uh, town center is to just go through the um, design standards in the ordinance for the town center. Just go through point by point and see what kind of questions or comments people have. Um, so if we could bring up uh, the building elevations. Joe, does the applicant want to take responsibility for showing their own plans? Oh, thank you. Rick? Um, I'm happy to do that if I can get a little bit of a walkthrough on, on what that typically looks like for you folks. Do you have the plans on your laptop? Uh, yep. So if I make you the host, at the bottom of the screen, it says share screen. 
Do you see that? Yep. So you just open those documents, you pick up, you click on share screen and the documents will show in a window and you click on the one you want to show. Great. Thank you. I'll pull up the, uh, pull up the drawings right now. And can I just ask um, it, when you pull up a drawing, will you just let us know which one, like which map you're bringing up so we can yep. materials. Thanks. Okay, and uh, so what? Which which plan did we want to start with? Um, let's start with a. Uh, I think the elevation. Just the a one point one. I just want to kind of go through and check off, basically check off the boxes here. <laughs> Great, and if you could zoom in on the front elevation. That did not go as planned. I'm looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking at the front elevation. I, I'm just not sure how slow the response is. Okay, it's a little slow. We're still, we've mo got most of it. Just clipped a little at the right hand side. Could be my computer. All right. Is there a reason I'm not seeing it? <laughs> All right, think, perfect. Does everybody have the front elevation? Yep. I have the paper, but I'm not seeing it on the screen. Oh, I see it. Yep, it's good. Are you on gallery view? It's clocking. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I'll catch up. It is thinking. All right, so I assume this is it's labeled front elevation, and it's what you are considering the front elevation. Um, so scale, does anybody have any comments about the scale of the building? Too big, too small, just right? It looks, looks fine it's reasonable. to me. I think it's in pretty good proportion with the, uh, the other Zev's other development you know, behind it. Okay. In my opinion. Yeah. I would tend to agree. Um, so how about the uh, front entry? Or which floor? Well, building by, we need a prominent front entry, right? You've got a, a front entry to the first floor that's you know obviously sort of in the middle of the front elevation and the uh, the screened in porch um, again another prominent front entry for the the second floor uh, Rick do we have the renderings of the of the front building available for we did we did do renderings I thought it, it had been in the original submission. If, if that might be helpful to the to the board to review in terms of gaining some perspective. Um, I think we can tell a lot from this. We may, we'll take a look at them after, but Peter, you had a comment? 
Yeah, I, I do. I mean, if, if we go through our traditional analysis of the, the, the front entry and specifically the, quote, ground level uh, main entrance, which is the commercial property entrance, uh, this certainly is not quite what we're used to seeing partly because the commercial use is apparently going to be a short-term rental, which is not like a coffee shop or a restaurant or an apparel store or anything. But the, the, the windows are basically identical. The only difference is the four light uh, main doorway. Uh, it, it, it does not have what we're used to seeing in terms of a, of a um, street friendly, come on in, uh, kind of thing which the town center district contemplates. Not to say that it's right or wrong, it's just it's very much unlike what we've seen in the past and what is sort of suggested by the mixed use provisions of the uh, ordinance. I, I do understand your comments um, and, and would agree if the proposed use for uh, the ground floor was something along the lines of village retail or, or you know, um, non uh, non medical office space. You know, as, as we've stated before, this is a proposed short term rental, which, while is a non residential use use according to the zoning ordinance, you know, does uh, imply less of a of a of a foot traffic and frontage component. Um, and qualitatively, this entrance does uh, align really closely to the atrium-based entrance of our adjacent 810 Hillway building. Um, you know, just like this lot, we, we are abutted on two different sides. And our solution to make that work was having a central atrium. But there, in that, there was still no grand entrance that, you know, foot traffic was clearly directed to that was perpendicular to the building. Um, but it was received very well by this board as being a good solution to a, um, uh, a, ge a geographically challenging lot. Um, this is a, a below deck entrance, um, which is identical to what we have two lots down. And, and if, if I can add on to that, the, the um, I think, you know, looking at the, the residents solely without the, some of the site plan features, it's easy to lose that, <clears throat> but you've got a, you know, you've got a uh, landscaping and site steps that are really directing that foot foot traffic to those to that front door, and it is perpendicular to the entrance. <clears throat> in that more traditional sense. All right. Any other comments on that? Well, so was it just, was it suggested that there's there's some sort of rendering? It sounds like. Of, of that would include what you just talked about that might be helpful actually to see that sort of presentation from what would be I guess the street there it, it looks it's so hard with these 2d sort of renderings they're just almost too flat to get the sense of of space but I went back and looked at what we had last time and it I didn't see any let me pull that up for you if that's the pleasure of the board yeah that'd be good Apologies, bear with me just a second here. Excuse me, Joe? Yeah. I am going to log off and log back in. My my uh, computer appears to be hung up. So I'm going to leave okay. you. Maybe. <laughs> It'll let me.
So I have a rendering in front of me. I just can't tell if it's being shared with you folks. Well, if it's in front of you, we should be seeing it Real shortly. So you were able to see me go through file, file tree and dialogue, some of that stuff? No. Right. Yeah. Uh, we are drawing C2.5 in front of us right now. Yeah, I'm still looking at C2.5. Oh, um, okay, bear with me just a second. I said that the share was paused. Rick, we're able to see it now. All right. So what you're looking at is a, a, a photo composite. Uh, there's site photo with uh, composite with site rendering based on the architectural plans and the, the, uh, the site plans. It's really okay, hard so. to see it though. Can everybody see that? Yeah, I really can't see the entrance though, really. No, we, we, have a, we, have, we have a front entrance rendering. I don't know if the board wants to sound off if you're looking at a, a more direct view of the front now. No. No. Still looking at the garage view. The east side, southeast direction, whatever. Let's try this. There you go. There we go. The shrubbery really hides it. Rick, would you put it on the one that shows there's it's it's the front entrance where we actually see the sidewalk leading down. I know that there's plantings that that do hide it, but it does give a good idea of the scale. That yep. That's, this is the one you're referring to? Yes. Okay. So what we can take from this is the grading, um, you know, doesn't do anything to, you know, this is, this is supposed to be basically from the street view. Qualitatively, you know, the, it's very easy to visualize and appreciate the ground floor um, for what it is. Um, this is very similar in, in grade to, again, our adjacent building when viewed uh, directly from Hill Way, where there's a nice sloping uh, juniper wall embankment leading down to the entrance. Um, I understand that there is a planting that's, that's blocking the main entryway uh, in this particular rendering, but it, again, we have a, a nice square entrance that's inviting, that's bordered on either side by those dark pillars. Um, and it's perpendicular to the street entrance and it's well within the line of sight. It doesn't appear to be, you know, the grade itself doesn't obstruct view. You know, if, if, if it would please the board, I'm happy to remove that individual planting that's blocking the door and put that somewhere else. But, uh, you know, they, they just, they rendered it based on the perspective and the, and what was on the plan. Um, I actually kind of like the two trees there on either side of the path in. We also were, were attempting to keep the trees that are existing um, by the driveway that does allow from existing buffering. 
okay. and those are shown on the original view that we saw viewing the driveway. Um, you know, w these these plantings are meant to uh, accent and augment the frontage of, of uh, Scott Dyer. Um, and yeah, I, I think architecturally, I mean, this this building, it's it's the sister of what we have right next door. You know, the, Zeb, the feel is the same. Yep. Excuse me. Are these plantings reflected in your landscape plan? Or are yes. they just whoever was doing this put in plants to? The plantings reflect the plan. Okay. Can you, do you have the next shot down the street looking at it? I think it would be good for everybody to see these. Rick, can you do us the honors? Yeah, <clears throat> bear with me just a minute here. I do have to comment on the marvel of the fact that we have a dozen plus people all streaming, uh, connecting each other. You know, I, I understand, uh, you know, I may want to be one of the younger people in this group, but I too remember going through school without computers. Um, <laughs> so this does expedite the process in, in a uh, unusual time. Um, are any of those the existing trees? Is that birch an existing? No, the, on, on this point of the lot, there are two um, heritage apple trees. Uh, there's actually one, um, I think the birch might actually be existing. I, I'd have to check. Um, yeah. there, the, the, uh, Rick, I, I think the apple tree was planning on coming down. Um, half of it's already fallen. We lost half of it in the last storm. It's hollowed out. Um, it's sad because the the fruit that's produced by these trees is actually quite good, um, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm losing them every major storm, and unfortunately, yeah. they're they're end let's, of life. Let's keep going around the corner, please. Rick, I think it was the second image in the series that has the Scott Dyer projection. Uh, sorry, the Hillway projection. I'm going to create a new new share each time here. Um, oh. oh, that must be because they're all separate documents. I was just look, I'm just looking at the landscaping plan to see if the existing trees are marked, and I'm not seeing them. And it just could be I haven't found the legend yet. The, the existing trees along the hillway frontage, um, there's, there's too much infrastructure being installed in that area to, to save those. There's uh, water, sewer, um, and storm basically all, all converge in that back area. Um. So Maureen, just a quick question. We we allow the, the uh, app, we, we, the applicant can pick, if they're on a corner, they can pick one or the other street you, front. Yeah, you, the history has been that you, that's the way you've treated it. And okay. um, we can just go one, one property over and you, you allowed one of them to be the primary frontage. And then you said that the other frontages still had to, interact with the pedestrian, but it wasn't a primary frontage. Okay. Uh, and then do we have one more going uphill way? I don't believe so. Okay. Oh, All yeah. right, so in the, uh, in the town center, uh, design standards, we have building and parking orientation, openings, exterior materials, landscape and site development, and buffering. So based on what you guys have seen, does anybody have any comments about that or 
Do we feel okay with that front entry, Jim? What to say? It's a nice looking building. Well, I um, I'm torn because I think the I like the entrance. I think it's appropriate for what the use is, but I'm always aware of being consistent. And compared to how we've dealt with other properties, so it doesn't come back and bite us. So it's it's not really a prominent entrance, but like I said, I think it's appropriate for what he's using it for. So I'm torn. I I haven't made up my mind yet. I don't know if anybody else has a the dilemma or any of the thoughts. Carol Ann. My dilemma isn't with the design. My dilemma is what class of um, commercial use short-term rental is. So what other things would be allowed to go in there if somebody else should decide to change it and use it for something other than a short-term rental? That's my concern. I, I think that's a great, great point, Carol. And if I can speak to that, um, the, the applicant is, uh, uh, both in the, the original response that you should have um, uh, in front of you folks and then also in the, in the letter that I, I think you'll get maybe uh, tomorrow. Um, we outlined that, that the applicant's willing to, uh, to have a conditional approval, basically limiting the commercial use of this property to the, the short-term rental. And Zev, you unmuted and looked like you wanted to add something in there as well. I mean, just the only comment was, I mean, anything, what we learned from the last planning board is that you know, the design standards are very different as soon as you go to a different use. So you know, right. we're, we're, we're locked into using a short-term rental unless we implement the infrastructure changes that would be consistent with the code of a commercial building. And so, you know, the short-term rental is defined within the zoning ordinance as a non-residential use, thereby classifying this building as a mixed use. So we meet the legal standard um, of what is required for acceptance for this building um, in terms of the, the uses um, proposed. Uh, you know, construction and, and code um, implementations are a completely different topic. And for me to change the use and all of a sudden change this to a medical use or a non-medical a non professional use, I now have to follow different rules, the ADA compliance rules, which we already talked about, the parking standards, the, the firewall standards, the sprinkler system standards. And so, you know, without a whole lot of input from the planning board, this, this use is fairly locked in um, and will not be able to be used for a, a higher design than what we're currently proposing. Uh, one thing I'd add, Carol Ann, is that when most uh, commercial operations move into a new building, they do have to spend money to revamp the building to meet their needs. And often that includes bringing a building up to ADA standards. Um, and, and I so ultimately, that. Zev may be making his, his retail, his, his commercial space less, value by, less valuable by not doing that now. But I, I think that's up, you know, if, if He's okay with that. I don't have a big problem with that. I, I understand all that. And I just, I, I just want to make sure that if, if this is approved as a short-term rental, that there's no wiggle room in there. And I'm not talking about Zeb. I'm talking about 15 years from now when somebody buys, may buy this building and decides to do something with it. I'm thinking down the road. I'm not thinking. Yeah, they may have to revamp it. I mean, that's but what, typical what for commercial buildings. Of, what class of, of commercial use is this? Because we have classes of uses where you can have different uses. This wouldn't be suitable for any commercial so, use other than. So I, I guess we've just got to write it very, very narrowly and make sure that it's very, very clear that this can be nothing but a residential, non-residential use um, without some major renovations. That's all. If I may, I believe anytime that a higher level saying. use is required for building, doesn't it have to go back to the planning board yes. for approval yes. anyways? Yes. So yes. it's, a, it, I mean, the, the, you were, we're debating topics that our current rules and regulations already dictate procedure on. I just yeah. want to make sure that 
short-term rental is there's nothing else that can wiggle in under that that particular thing. But no golden Andrew, corrals, yeah. Caroline, I promise. Andrew. Yeah. And I'm not talking about you, Zev. I know this is what you want can, to do. Uh, um, can we let Andrew speak, please? I, I agree with Caroline. I'm 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 always um, <laughs> You know, there's always ways to work the system. I, I have a question, two questions for Maureen. One is um, sort of what is the, the I guess, the, the lateral move for a business? If you were deemed short-term rental, what other things without coming back to the planning board under a normal sort of approval would, would those things be? I don't remember. I'm just wondering if you could tell me that. Yep, let me look it up. Um... I don't think it's going to be easy to make any kind of conversion. Okay. Um, and, well, and I want to say that because uh, we have two things in the town center zoning. We have the permitted uses list and the uh, non-residential uses goes A to M. And the last two items are wind energy system and short-term rental. And then we have our conversion chart which is at the very end of the town center. And there are 10 categories and you can move from a bigger category to a smaller category, um, but you can't go the other way without going to the planning board. And the last two items under non-residential uses aren't even in the conversion list. So um, my interpretation, which isn't the one that counts, is that if you wanted to convert to anything, you'd have to come back to the planning board. But, um, you know, we can do what we can to close any um, doubts about that by putting a condition on the approval. Yeah, my second question was, is that going to raise any legal flags to put a condition like that, given the ordinances? And so I, it sounds like you think that's possible, and I think that that would be fine by me. I, I want to, you know, dot I's, cross T's to make sure this isn't challenged in some way that somebody buys it is like, well, I don't need to because something else in the ordinance allows me to do that, you know. And and I'm not Andrew, I'm not gonna promise you that's not gonna happen. You know, we try not to let that happen, but unfortunately, um, people are motivated by revenue and they are very creative and sometimes it does happen. Okay. I, I don't know if you if there needs to be a question to the town lawyer then about that. Well, the, the, other, the other wrinkle in this whole thing is right now, short-term rentals is a moving target. So, I mean, maybe as part of that ordinance amendment, some of these potential questions can be addressed in the ordinance amendments. Yeah, I mean, my, my feeling is it's, it's just kind of, short-term rentals is kind of a funny thing to be considered in this whole package of non, anyway, that's a whole other story. That's fine. Yeah. I just wanted to, Ask those couple things. Peter. Peter. Yeah, I, uh, I find myself conflicted in, in sort of a similar <clears throat> vein and I've certainly not made any decision either way. And I look forward to a, a site walk and a further uh, presentation. But looking at the history of this thing, uh, Dr. Myrowitz wants to have his residence right next to his, his medical practice building, which I totally get. It's a great idea. I would want to do exactly the same thing if I were him. Um, to do just the residence he can't do because there's not sufficient space and that's not the intended use in this district. So the solution is to have something underneath his residence that would qualify. And the only thing that seems to make sense is the short-term rental. Uh, basically, we got down there just to build out basement. And if he says, well, it's, it's available for short-term rental and nobody ever uses it, does he really care? Or it could be an in-law apartment or it could be a guest room for visitors. You mentioned also you have uh, employees and other um, businesses who might come and spend a day or two there. Um, it just does not seem to have itself any commercial objective that's necessary. 
and if you know if, if you could just let it go stay empty for that matter so I'm, I'm having a little trouble connecting this with the purpose of the town center zoning district and as you know dr maris as much as this may seem irritating and annoying to you uh, and i think you, you've got a great idea here but we are we have to live within the confines of the ordinance and i'm, ha I'm having some trouble seeing this as a real live commercial venture for short-term rentals you may make it to be such or you may not and it sits there vacant 12 months a year who cares right so i'm not sure that this is in my mind quite reached the level of of you know commercial useness uh, to qualify for the ordinance that's that's my problem but may I, it seems may I like comment the on problem that? hold on it seems like the problem though peter is that the ordinance as it's now written is at odds with the stated goals of the ordinance, right? I mean, on one hand, it allows short-term rentals as a use on the first floor. On the other hand, you know, it states that the goal of the town center is to promote commercial use of the first floor. And it seems like it's a problem with the ordinance. Well, if, if Dr. Maris didn't have his primary residence on the upper two floors, I wouldn't worry too hard about it. You know, it's, it's a short-term, you know, rental or it's not. But it really is living in the basement of his home. That's basically what we're talking about. Um, All right, can we do one thing here real quick? I, I feel so the need to comment on that before on, we get off Zach, topic. Hold on, hold on. Last time we talked, you, you got, I didn't see this in the packet, but you were going to respond to the code officer's request to show that the lower level qualifies as a first floor. Have you done that? Rick, you want to comment to that one? Yeah, I assume, Mr. Chairman, that that was pointed at, at the applicant. <clears throat> yeah, we, we um, it, it's submitted in, in, uh, in the most recent submittal and uh, it was reviewed the by one the one that we received yes okay um it, it uh, represents as a uh, uh, spreadsheet calculation and was accepted by the the ceo as acceptable demonstration of that okay good okay coming back to peter's comment um you know I, i'm sympathetic to the conversations of use or proposed use um you know, going back to the ground floor conversation, I mean, this is exactly the exa exactly what I'm doing next door at my 810 Hillway building. Um, we have a ground floor that has been defined as being just uh, the same metric we're, we're, we're in a few percent of what is defined. And we were very happy about proposing 7,000 square feet of mixed medical office space, even though that calculation does include that uh, three quarters of one of my buildings is essentially a basement uh, in terms of only one face is actually below grade. And we had no problems with that. And that was fully acceptable. Um, it's important to understand that I currently live right next to my practice now. I reside at 12 Hillway. And so, you know, my commute is actually getting about 30 feet longer. I'm moving away from where I practice. But it, it's qualitatively, this lot is surrounded by a farmhouse, a single family home, a red barn, and a middle school. Um, in reviewing the proposed uses for the, the zoning ordinance for the town center zone, you know, I understand that I'm supposed to be meeting certain uses and, and recommendations that the town center has. I, I followed that to the letter by applying my, my medical practice to the other, the other um, lot that we developed. I don't have a use on this lot that I think meets the recommended character and quality when taken into account the surrounding properties. I shouldn't put a gas station right next to the middle school, in my opinion, when there's two more down the road and they and they they duped it out. I don't think it makes sense to put a restaurant right there where my neighbors are going to be complaining um, because of the noise and making sure that we close every single minute um, or, or in light of the the whatever time limit the town's going to put on me to close at, at a certain period of time. I don't think it's appropriate for me to put in a more commercial use that can be dis disruptive to the peaceful and quiet enjoyment of my surrounding neighbors. You know, I'm, I'm very aware of that. And in considering the uses that meet the ordinance that follow the legal law of what is uh, considered acceptable in the town of Cape Elizabeth, short-term rentals meet that standard. And I legally meet, I, I am following the letter of what is acceptable. 
And so I understand there may be some nebulous opinions about, you know, whether this truly meets the spirit of what is meeting the town center zone. I think it does. And I think it, I think it does to a higher degree than a cottage industry manufacturing. I mean, if I had to put in some level of manufacturing, again, right across the street from the school or right across the street from the Brentwood neighborhood, I think I get a fair amount of pushback. Um, you know, it's, it's a very qualitative opinion and that, that has a lot of room for subjective interpretation. It, it is my opinion and it's opinion of, of, of Brick Dunton that this, this submission really does meet the qualifications of being a mixed use building while taking into consideration that this is an abutting zone adjacent to residential C. I have to blend into the adjacent lots. <clears throat> Uh, hold on, Rick. So I don't think it's very hard to think of a lot of commercial uses that would be fine in there. Medical offices, coffee shop, flower shop. There, there are plenty of low key, I'm sorry, commercial uses that would be just fine there. Hair care, you know, Polly's was across the street from you for a long time. Um, so I don't really agree with you, but I kind of do agree that this is an allowed use by the zoning ordinance. And I don't particularly agree with the zoning ordinance on this, but I don't really see how any way to uh, say, I don't want it there because of the zoning ordinance. So, Jonathan. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I'm all about people being able to use their property how they want. And I think that when Zev came in, in front of us the last time, um, despite there was a good amount of opposition to the building that he did, um, we the planning board looked at it, examined it, and allowed it. And I think that the building gets a lot of comments from even people who opposed it at that time. Um, this one is a little bit difficult. And the only reason I'm saying that is because of that legal opinion that we got from the town attorney, basically saying that if short term rentals, there's a moratorium right now for more licenses going out. And then if all of a sudden the town council says no more short term rentals period, or no more short term rentals in the town center, Basically, that, and even though I know we're allowing it for this building, um, I don't know where it goes because then basically it can't be used for a non residential use or a different business. Um, and that kind of scares me in a way because we're, we're basically allowing a very, very nice building that a lot of time and effort has been put into designing. And I give you kudos for that because you're, you're giving us a completed package, which I think all of us appreciate. Um, so there's no sort of moving target with regards to what you want to do and what you want to have. Um, my only thing is where this goes with the moratorium on short term rentals. And I don't want to see a situation where you build this beautiful building and then you can't get an occupancy permit. Um, because of the use downstairs and then you say okay well then I will change it to a business for real estate or my, one of my LLCs like you mentioned last meeting and the ADA requirements aren't there the parking requirements aren't there and it just turns into some sort of mess um, so that's sort of my reluctance on it I, I, I echo what Peter's concern is or not concern but what his feelings were that yeah it's you're basically building a beautiful home um, on this property and, and grounding out the, the basement level. But if it meets those standards that are there, then I respect that you're, that's the use of the property. What scares me though, is what happens uh, with these short-term rentals. And I know we've gotten a ton of emails and it's kind of obviously unrelated to this project, but because of we're looking at the short-term rentals about how there are people who aren't a fan of those. Um, so that's that's sort of where I'm at, and I'm just I think speaking to an attorney is might be something that we might need to do as a board um, because I just don't know I don't know if if we if we grant it now does that grandfather you in does it not grandfather you in I I don't know and so 
when I have these legal questions in my head, um, that raises a level of concern for me. And because I don't want to set you guys up for, geez, you go and spend $500,000 building this beautiful building that looks great and is in the letter of the law. And then you can't use the downstairs, which means that I don't know if that means that you can't occupy the house. I don't know. Um, so that's, I just want to, maybe Maureen has some answers for us right now, or maybe we should consult the town attorney, or maybe you've consulted an attorney as well. So. So Maureen, I saw you shaking your head. No. So yes, I, I did consult the town attorney because, um, moratoriums can always get tricky. And I think I did send you that letter. And if anybody needs it again, I'm happy to provide it. Um, but what the town attorney said was the moratorium took effect in June. It's supposed to um, end in January unless it's extended. And just saying, I've heard from people that it is their intent that it will be extended until the new ordinance amendments are in place. So if you assume that um, that's going to be in place until the new ordinance takes effect, uh, what the town attorney was saying that the planning board can approve a proposal with a short-term rental in it, but that proposal cannot get a short-term rental permit until the moratorium expires. And when the moratorium expires, if the, the ordinance that is then in effect would not allow a short-term rental in this space, uh, then no short-term rental can be put in that space. And then the applicant still needs to comply with the town center requirements to have a non-residential use in that space and would not be able to get a certificate of occupancy for the building until they resolve that zoning deficiency. And that's, that's concerning to me. And, and Zev, I'm, have you consulted an attorney on this to say, hey, you know what, that attorney, uh, town attorney is wrong. Um, I'm just curious if you have, because that's the last thing I want to see is you guys spend all this money and it turns out to be a vacant building or we are back to square one trying to fit a square into a square peg into a round hole with parking issues or um, some sort of uh, whatever need is needed for uh, what if you have to change that space from short term rental. John, I, I do understand your concern and I really do appreciate this because as you said, it, it's my, my wife's uh, liability and risk. Um, so, you know, I think it's the purview of the planning board to work upon the rules and regulations that are, are present. Um, we all know that there are some proposed changes that are, that are, that could be implemented. Um, and I am comfortable proceeding as it is. And I think that it's the purview of the planning board to look at this, uh, underneath the current ordinances that are applicable, not any discussed language that may or may not be changing in the future. Um, if that's a, if that's a liability that I have to figure out later down the road, you know, that's something that I have to identify. Um, and I do appreciate that you, you know, are um, thinking about me, not just as a, as a planning board member, but as a, as a community member. Thank you. So I just have to say that though, it, it doesn't, that answer I can understand and I can respect that answer, but at the same time, it doesn't, we have to look into the future. And so if you are in a circumstance where you cannot occupy this building because the short-term rental um, has changed and therefore you have to change the use of that ground floor, that first floor to something else and there's not enough parking or the entrances are deficient or something along those lines and you would have to come back to us, which is fine. We would review those board, that plan, but let's say there isn't enough parking or there is an issue with regards to that and we can't change the use or, or allow the use for that proposed change as a planning board that leaves us with a building in the middle of the town, obviously that you paid for, um, but that isn't going to be able to be occupied in a way. And so that we have to look down the road and I can understand what you're saying that we are dealing with the ordinances we are, and that's why I'm not bringing up, okay, I don't like the use of short-term rental. Like you said, it's within the ordinance now. And that's why I think that as a board, we have to consider that. Um, but I'm just wondering where we go if, because of this moratorium right now, what happens there? So that there sounds are, like a question we need legal advice on, Maureen. And that's what I'm saying. Well, 
We've the, if, on fortunately, there are <laughs> algorithms, you know, in regards to how this property are managed that that don't that most of the ways forward don't result in me being unable to occupy a, a house directly adjacent to the one that I'm in, unable to move into that plan. Um, and so, you know, there are there are various ways that this can go. Um, I would not I do not wish to discuss those at this point in time. Um, you know, I think that I think that as these uh, changes are recommended and or implemented, I think that uh, I'm optimistic that as good neighbors, we can move forward and make sure that with this, this permitted and approved and under construction, we can, we can find a way forward. Um, if I do have to end up, as you said, coming back to the planning board uh, to have a different non-residential use, it will then be the purview of the planning board to make sure that I meet the requirements for that additional non-residential use. Okay. Carol Ann. So you mentioned uh, legal advice. What, what other questions other than the ones Maureen has already addressed with the attorney are you thinking? I was thinking what John was specifically asking. You know, I approving the, the possible seems that we have a possibility of approving something that would not be uh, uh, occupiable would not be able to receive a certificate of occupancy and that that's what the attorney addressed in his letter sometimes i just like to sort of question an attorney and <laughs> more than thinking but like i said though um i've been known to do that once in a while. Uh, but like I said, I mean, I, I think the applicant, though, uh, would have a fair or should have a fair chance to also possibly oh, certainly. have to make you consult an attorney because I know you're already spending a lot of money on this thing. But at the same time, there's sometimes different legal opinions. Um, we're not the court, so we can't decide that. But it is something I think um, if if there was a different opinion, that came out to question to present that to our town attorney and say, hey, well, what do you think of that? So sort of what I, I mean, I trust our town attorney, but at the same time, I think that the law and these ordinances, especially when there's a little bit of a conflict, are always open to interpretation, especially when it's not even as if like the town council voted last year to say no short term rentals in the town center. This is sort of that influx situation. Um, so that's I that's, I, I just want to make sure we're all protected from the applicant to the board, to the town, um, that we're thinking about this with our eyes wide open. All right. Um, I'd like to kind of wrap this up and move on to the next uh, item fairly soon here. Um, I was hoping to do a quick discussion of the uh, landscaping plan and then um, figure out a time for the site walk and then uh, go ahead and table till the next meeting. Uh, Rick, microphone. Thank you for the warning on that. Um, I, I wonder if if um, the board had made any consideration of the expedited review and and, and also I'm not familiar um, with that, with that process, and if that were to to um, have any effect on the on the site walk or or some. So, in my experience, expedited reviews are usually asked for in advance, generally at the workshop preceding the actual planning board meeting. Um, I don't see uh, having an exped. I don't see solving this tonight. I, I definitely want a sidewalk. I think most of the board members want a sidewalk. Um, and we haven't had a public hearing. And, yeah. Usually it's completeness and approval on the same night and you already got completeness. So we'd have to do the sidewalk and then take the uh, extra step for the possible approval. Um, yeah, the, the comment and concern was that we were hoping we were anticipating a completeness, you know, in a prior meeting. Um, and uh, obviously that didn't happen because of various issues a couple months ago. And, and I would like to see if I can get a foundation in the ground before the snow starts. 
Um, Snow this morning's up, so I don't know if that's going to be possible. <laughs> Rick. Yeah, I, I don't know to wear on my welcome on this, but um, one thing that would be helpful would be uh, uh, before proceeding to, to some of the next uh, procedural uh, kind of steps, um, if there would be uh, some kind of review of, of issues that the board feels are potentially still um, outstanding in their mind or need, need addressing. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if anybody had other concerns that they wanted to air, uh, we'd certainly want to hear those. Well, so that that's why I wanted to get to the landscaping because I don't, I think that most of the technical issues seem well sewn up or sufficiently commented on by the town engineer that you have your hands full just responding to all of his comments. Um, I, I wanted to look at the landscaping because I think I see some issues with it and I don't know if anyone else does, but um, I think it would be good to take a look at it. So if you could bring up your landscaping plan, which is sorry, one second. C24. Thank you. Thanks for bearing with me. I think I'm getting a little bit faster at this. So does anybody have any comments? Or I can launch into it. All right, so the issue I have with how you've done this is along, uh, let me just, along Hillway and Scott Dyer in the lower right, you basically use your plants to make like a fence around the property and it seems like it's a very hard boundary and the purpose of the vegetation is to make something you know inviting and creates continuity between the yard and the sidewalk and you know especially the the plant selection the um the bee plant which i'm blanking on the name at the moment that uh, tall, tends to grow tall, green stuff. Yeah, white cedar. cedar? Oh, white my. cedar would be. White cedar? White cedar, thank you. Um, which is why, you know, so I don't necessarily have any suggestions for how to improve it other than, I think it's not really creating something that creates a nice continuity with the sidewalk and the uh, building. We, the plantings were selected. Uh, I took a look at the recommended planting lists from the town, not the Yeah, I know, acceptable. I understand that. It's not the, the plants themselves, it's the fact yep. that they're arranged in basically a virtual wall around the corner of the property. I think, that there's, I think that's one interpretation. I mean, I, I do think that's one interpretation. I mean, if you did a plan things of my junipers on the wall, you might think I'm building a fortress, but yet when you're looking at A10 Hill Way, it's, it's very inviting and it serves as, as protection for the area. You know, um, again, you know, we thought it was a beautification effort. I'm happy to take them away uh, or take a few of them away, you know, to, to 
thin that out if it satisfies your 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 palate. Um, but you know, we're trying to we're you know, I, I think we're in the world of artistic interpretation uh, at this point. Um, you know, if I need to move them and put some, I know there's some comments on the parking lot. If I need to move them, if I can, to bring it closer to the driveway, to people, if you feel that the trees are not adequate bufferage for the driveway, you know, that's a different conversation. But I mean, it's a, it's a similar issue. You know, we're trying to beautify the property. We're not trying to hide it. Um, and so if I need to, if I need to remove a few of those to, to make, you know, make the board happy, it's not something I'm opposed to, but I don't, that's not an issue I'm, I, care one way or another about. I'm just trying to employ the same care and quality and, and beauty associated with the proposal of this lot that I've already proven I've done on the two adjacent lots. You know, if you, if, if you don't like, if you don't think it's pretty enough for you, I'll, I'll, I'll change it a slightly different way, you know, but, yeah. but I don't feel that that's a significant issue. Go ahead, Peter. No, uh, Joe, I, um, I, I guess I, I don't agree with you on this. And I hope Zeb didn't think I'm antagonistic to his project from my prior comments, but if you're going to accept that ground floor use as a non-residential residential, residential uh, use that complies with the ordinance, I, I think you want you ought to embrace that and do your landscaping accordingly. You, I don't think you want to create a landscaping that invites people to come up to the front door of the tenant, uh, you know, the short-term tenant in the basement. I, I think the you, you might as well just landscape that parcel as if it were a residential parcel because that's really consistent with the neighborhood and the uses to which the ground floor is being put. So I would be totally in favor of, of keeping a, a residential landscaping on that entire uh, property if, if you accept the, the use that uh, Zev's talking about. Any other thoughts? I don't have an issue with the landscaping. Yeah, neither okay. do I. I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, I have one question that's not not necessarily, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it is all, I mean, I think people should roughly do what they want to do with landscaping in terms of their, uh, what they think is, is looks nice and is inviting. My question only is um, one of sight lines and, and turning there, it's, it's hard for me, I mean, it, it, you know, these are, you know, very flat renderings, so it's hard to, to, to know what it would look like. But I, I, my only worry is if there was so much planting as close to the road that it might obstruct so many um, turning onto Hill Way um, that might not be able to see somebody, I don't know, biking or something. Um, that's my, my only concern, if there was so much right up to the edge of the property. Um, I don't know how you determine that, but <laughs> I just want to put I that out there. The setbacks are pretty significant. We did have plantings that were in the town right of way. We have had to pull them back just based on prior recommendations. I mean, there's no there's no hard rule that keeps us from putting plantings into the town right of way, but nonetheless, we have pulled them back just to make sure that everything is within our property lines. And as you can tell, if you follow the sidewalk lines, there is quite a bit of a outpouching on the sidewalk. Um, and that, that uh, median and stop sign does uh, stick out quite a bit onto Scott Dyer. Um, you know, there's a stop sign right there it's, you know, I, I can't, I don't have a rendering for you, but the visibility, if you're stopping at, at a hillway turning left or right on Scott Dyer is pretty, it's pretty full. You know, I don't think that these plantings are going to have any, if you look at the crosswalk, if you're, if you've come to a complete stop and you look to your left, you have a very clear line of sight um, down the, down Scott Dyer to the left. And obviously we're not going to have any effect to the right looking uh, on, into the westerly direction. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate that concern. But you know the car is going to be coming to a stop farther into the Scott Dyer Road than any of our planting, so you know that we we won't be obstructing. That, that, that's yeah. the The rule of thumb is that there will be no obstruction there or the line of sight. All right, Carol Ann, you want? To I just something? wanted to comment. I thought they had pulled back the plantings uh, since the last time we looked at this. Yes, they pulled them back out yeah. of the uh, and Zach public that, so. Joe, can I ask a question unrelated yeah. to things? If, um, Zev, I, I think you had mentioned this, but it might have been during the workshop. I know where the driveway is going is going to take away that sort of loop driveway that you have now. Um, was parking for the second, the uh, 
the duplex, the 12 hill way duplex, was that going to go to the other side uh, or to your, your medical building? Um, or how was that going to work? I'll punt that one to Rick because he has the hard numbers, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's a great question. Um, and, and that was something that was raised in staff comments and, and uh, is addressed in the letter that uh, hopefully you'll, you'll receive shortly. But <clears throat> just is that the original Tarbox subdivision submission um, uh, allowed sharing of parking for lot two, uh, which is the, the driveway, the loop driveway that you're referring to. Um, there, were, um, there were shared spots, I, I believe four shared spots with lot one. Uh, being the parking lot of the uh, of the uh, the practice, um, and then there was one additional spot uh, parallel to that loop road um, that was that was considered with that lot too. There was also in the in the overall parking count and the submittal submittal to the board at the time. There was one extra space, um, fifty required, I believe, was the number, and then fifty one. Um, uh, presented to the board and and uh, 51 spaces. So, um, but they but for lot two, the the one space that we're referring to was parallel to that loop road. By by closing off the loop road, essentially uh, you don't need to dr to have that drive through ability. And so the the parking space for the for the lot two is now not dissimilar from most other driveways where you drive in and then you have a you know, a parking space at the end of the driveway. Um, so there's your one space. You don't actually lose one space in this plan. And we verify that the, the parking stall in the, the driveway uh, as shown is deep enough so that the, the, um, the parking of that vehicle can be outside of, of parking setbacks. Is that, is that clear? Um, I'm not sure I did it justice. Uh, the... Yeah, but what about the other? So I think that's would be for the first, um, for the part of the farmhouse that's closest to Farm Hill Way, uh, excuse me, Hill Way, um, but the other side of the duplex, where's the parking going to be for that? So that's that's shared with the with the the parking lot on lot one. There are okay. four so with the new I... parking lot. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, did I misunderstand you on, on the 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 new? Can, can you repeat that? Let me, so let me make sure I soak that so in. So with, with the new building, the loop yeah. is going to go away um, because part of that's going to be the driveway for the new building, correct? Correct. Okay, so um, where's the parking going to be for that second part of the duplex of the old farmhouse? Um, who's going to, where's the parking going to be for that? Okay, yeah, we are on the same page. So there was one... Okay. There was one space parallel to that loop road, and then the other, the other parking for the duplex yeah. was shared parking with the with the the um, the lot on the commercial property. Okay, and that so was, medical that building. Was, yeah, that was that was okay. for the submittal um, back four in four years ago. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, so I guess if it's addressed in a letter, I'll take a look, and if I have questions, I'll let you know. Yeah, the the net the takeaway is basically. Uh, a, a net even on, on parking. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we need to talk at all about the other, you're still moving the property line, right? Between lot, uh, is this one and two or three and two? Uh, yeah, the, the, the proposal is a subdivision amendment as well as a site plan amendment. Um, I think mainly because the, uh, yeah, that, that boundary between lots two and three uh, uh, is being revised. Wait, do we have that drawn? You have a, yeah, you have a subdivision plan from Owen Haskell. And, and so that's an amended, amended subdivision plan that shows the area to be added to lot three and taken from lot two. Let me see if I uh, stop and share. Okay. Um, all 
All right. Uh, I'm voting that we stop here, pick a time for our sidewalk and uh, table till the next meeting. Any opposed? I think a lot of these, I a lot of these questions people are asking will be answered by a sidewalk. Yes. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, so uh, date for a walk. Evenings, evenings are best for me. Unfortunately, they're getting shorter. <laughs> so 5.30. Yeah, 5.30. Uh, so no, next I, Tuesday, we have our next meeting. So we we could do it before the meeting. Oh, please no. Okay. No, that works for me. That works for Dan before the meeting. I think there's a lot of prep to be ready for that meeting, and I. Carol Ann said, yeah. "Please no." So really, <laughs> I think if she said please, we'll skip that one. Uh, so we could do. Thursday evening at 5.30? Thursday the 17th, how about that? Thursday. Oh wait, I'm in October already. <laughs> okay. So the day after tomorrow. I can't do that. I can't do this week. Are you okay. September 24th? Yeah, about Thursday, September 24th. Rick, would that work for you? Thursday, September 24th at 5.30. Going once, going twice. Okay. Sold. Zev? Zev, you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Can you do Thursday, 5.30? 24. Uh, is that September 24th? Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's next Thursday, the 24th. That should be a non issue. Thank you. Okay. Can I have a motion to table, please? Oh, I've lost my motion. Where is it? Be it ordered that based on plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Two Penguin Properties LLC for site plan review of a mixed use building with a 1920 square, square foot um, short term rental on the first floor and one residential unit on the second and third floors and amendments to the Tarbot, Tarbot Triangle subdivision located at 14 Hill Way be tabled to the regular October 20, 2020 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. That's in parentheses, so I'm going to say that we want to do that. That sounds good. Do I have a second? Second. Please take the roll call vote, Maureen. Mr. Bedansky. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Joe, on the Thursday site walk, I may be a little late for it. I'm going to be out of the area until mid to late afternoon. All right. These busy retired people. Um, I just want to quickly review the uh, sidewalk. When we do the sidewalk, we'll all be wearing masks still. And okay. we will maintain social distancing. Okay? Good. And we'll all Next have item. to uh, review that memo before the sidewalk, too. Yes. Sorry, Rick. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a thank you, folks, oh, okay. <laughs> for, your, for your time tonight. All right. Oh, Rick, you have to give, you have to, give uh, you have to host back over to Maureen. Oh. Before you go. Or you mm. can't leave. What, 
<laughs> What's it worth? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, you can mute us all and kick us off if you want. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm sorry, Maureen, help me out here. How do I uh, un... Go to my name and under more, up under participants. You go to my name and on the right hand side where it says more. Oh, yes. More, yep. Make host. Gotcha. Thank you. I have relinquished control. Thank you all. <laughs> you got the relinquished control. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. Okay. Redtail Properties LLC is requesting site plan review of proposed amendments to the site plan for 1226 Shore Road to add an eight space parking lot and change the use of building B from storage to village retail. The application is amending the site plan approval granted on September 17th 2002 and subsequently amended on September 21st, 2004, August 18th, 2009, and October 19th, 2010. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19.9 Site Plan Regulations. So we will begin by having the applicant introduce the project. Who is here? I see Stephen Bushy. Do you have anyone else with you? I believe uh, the uh, applicants, uh, Lucas and Kristen Homitz, are also on. Okay, I see Lucas. Uh, just, sorry, just me. Just okay. you? Okay. Great. Take it away, Steve. Uh, All then, right. Oh, shall sorry, we make, Maureen. Shall we make Steve the host? Oh yeah, you mind hosting, Steve? That's fine. Okay. So I brought up uh, a site plan here uh, and the proposal before you uh, that we presented uh, back in August and the sketch plan is the uh, renovations and uh, basically reoccupancy of the building at 1226 Shore Road and uh, there's two buildings on the property. Bear with me for a moment here. I want to pan through a little bit. Oops. You see that site plan well enough? Can you zoom in just a bit? Yeah. That's better. Okay. So 1226 Shore Road properties, 1.381 acres in size, uh, has a main driveway uh, dry entrance road off of Shore Road and that road, which is shared uh, with the town uh, through uh, an easement and uh, within the deed, uh, has covenants regarding that access piece that goes over to the town's parking lot behind Town Hall. So the property has two buildings. The building out in front, I believe was the former use was a, a medical office use, uh, but has not been occupied for a number of years now. I couldn't specifically say how long it's been uh, unoccupied, but Maureen, I'm sure knows what that, what that time has been. Behind it, identified on the plan here, Basically to the east or, or south is building B, a uh, smaller building and the proposal at least currently, uh, there are no tenants, but is to uh, in the future at some point in time, perhaps have a small retail use in that building. But the primary uh, important piece to our application is uh, the renovations and occupancy of the front building A along Shore Road for the principal uh, use of a dental practice, High Tide Dental, currently operating on uh, uh, Route 27 uh, at the corner of Mitchell Road, would be moving over to this building here. So the proposal includes a couple of different things, uh, and that is 
the dentist practice uh, at the front building, uh, the proposal to construct eight new parking spaces for patients and visitors uh, coming to the practice. There's an existing parking lot here uh, out in the rear, so to speak, that does have uh, capacity for uh, at least 12 spaces uh, today, and that would be continued in use uh, with access off of this main driveway here from Shore Road, and again, that extends over to the town uh, parking lot. There are a couple of additional spaces benefiting that back building, if and when that were to be uh, reoccupied. Uh, garage space uh, that is available, as well as a couple of additional uh, paved parking spaces here at the very rear corner of, of that building. Our proposal uh, were, is to include the new parking off of this existing uh, way, and that would uh, involve some degree of uh, reconstruction uh, of a small piece of the existing parking, uh, excuse me, sidewalk. There's a paved sidewalk going from the building uh, all the way along the, the road over to the town property. This eight space parking lot is relatively conventional in configuration, uh, 90 degree parking spaces. Uh, we do have a solid waste enclosure area here that would be provided at the end of the space. And I'll get to a couple of the staff comments that you folks may have seen in the things that we're gonna be suggesting as to uh, addressing those. Number of existing trees and uh, vegetation uh, around the property that will remain. I believe at the last meeting that we presented, there was a suggestion that we'd be cutting the taller pine and, and oak trees out in the front. And uh, we've now decided, the owners have decided that they will keep those trees uh, at the front of the property as well as a, a bunch of other existing landscaping uh, along that building. There are no exterior uh, building changes at this time proposed, although what we have shown uh, is a heat pump will be installed at the back uh, of the building along with a, an emergency generator and some uh, LP gas tanks uh, to benefit uh, this building. But Beyond that, there are no other significant uh, utility improvements for the front building. Uh, this parking lot, again, is uh, uh, large enough here at 2,800 square feet, roughly, of new impervious area that we have provided or will provide a, a small rain garden, which is in today's world for this type of development and size of new impervious area very appropriate uh, basically would be just a low area that will have uh, specific vegetation and plants uh, provided in it to allow for stormwater runoff off of this small area to drain into it and uh, have some degree of uh, water quality treatment in um, compliance with the, the DEP's standard stormwater practices. I'll note we have two ADA parking spaces. Uh, there's a, a bit of pavement out in front of the building here off of Shore Road. And that pavement, uh, I believe in the past, had been used for ADA parking and would continue to be uh, used for ADA parking under the, the current proposal. Also, there's an existing sign that will be uh, changed over to the new dental practice sign. A couple of comments that we had received uh, from the Town's peer review uh, uh, engineer, Steve Harding over at Sebago Tech, as well as the uh, uh, town planner's comments relate to uh, a number of things, including this sign. The existing sign appears to be slightly within the right of way by perhaps about a foot. So when it's replaced, it'll need to be shifted back a couple of feet uh, to be outside of uh, the right of way line. And that's an easy enough fix. Town engineer, or excuse me, the public works director and uh, the peer review engineer also have suggested that there be uh, a little bit more asphalt added off the corner of the existing asphalt. If we have to, we can look at a, a street view image to, to really see that a little bit more uh, refined. But right now, uh, there's no sidewalk connection really to the, the pavement. And I'm suggesting that uh, a small amount of Additional pavement could be added uh, here from the existing Shore Road pathway uh, into our parking lot and not be directly in the paid parking area. I spoke over uh, that topic with Jay Reynolds last week, and uh, I believe this is more or less what he's uh, looking at in terms of that connection. 
also suggesting that we provide some pavement striping so that folks coming off uh, the shore road sidewalk could walk behind the ADA spaces and then be able to gain access to where the existing sidewalk ends today, just off the corner of the building. So there's a five foot sidewalk here running the length of the building and then uh, down through past the, the existing parking lot and over to the town um, parking. The town, as I understand it, in speaking with Mr. Reynolds, he is looking at uh, actually repaving that sidewalk since it is a bit bumpy and uh, has uh, probably been there, I'm guessing, for over 20 years. So it's in a little tough shape. And uh, he informed me last week that the town, uh, because they have the maintenance responsibilities for this access route and the sidewalk, uh, will be repaving that sidewalk. I know just recently the town also replaced an exist or a, a light that had been uh, either clipped by a plow or was otherwise just missing. And that light has now been replaced and is uh, uh, in effect. And I believe all the lights are uh, functioning uh, along the, the this driveway area. Besides that, I'm not sure there's a whole heck of a lot of other aspects because of the primary importance for the applicant here in getting into building A. Building B, again, there've been some uh, interior pieces taken care of to address code issues, and they've been working very closely, I think, with town staff in uh, uh, addressing those pieces, but there are no tenants yet uh, identified. We have committed that uh, when or if this building is to get reused and if it's required by code, which I expect it would be as a retail use, uh, an ADA ramp would be installed uh, to this side doorway here. And that's likely to just consist of a kind of a prefabbed uh, aluminum uh, ramp of sorts. There's only uh, 18 to 24 inches there that needs to be overcome for, for grade to get up to the door. Besides that, we show where snow storage would take place off of the proposed parking lot. Uh, we also show a little snow storage area off of the existing parking lot. So there is ample room there. I'll note that the site plan includes a 50 foot uh, buffer zone here along the easterly side with existing woods to remain. And uh, we've had notes on the plans. I know that there was a town planner comment in regards to the note here, number seven on our site plan, talking about uh, vegetation removal and uh, the what is allowed for uh, tree maintenance and so forth within that 50 foot zone. So we uh, have cleaned that up in accordance with uh, the planner's comments about that piece. Also, there was a comment about the emergency generator and uh, we can certainly provide information with respect to the noise generation from uh, the generator to the property line. The generator is about 80 feet from its location here behind the building over to the side boundary. The uh, data that we had provided you folks in the initial uh, application uh, package uh, talks about the decibel level for the generator for two different types of uh, conditions. One, the test, weekly testing type condition and then second, uh, when it would be in operation uh, for providing power into the building on a, a temporary basis. I think I may have noted uh, originally during sketch plan, the generator is there really to provide a backup power source in the event that a power outage occurs during uh, operating hours and when uh, some type of procedure, dental procedure may be underway, that certainly requires power. And so uh, that is why that is needed. It is expected that it wouldn't be running uh, very often, uh, certainly. Uh, it will have probably, I'm guessing, weekly uh, run-ups for 15 minutes. Based on what the manufacturers provided for the decibel levels generated by this small uh, piece of equipment, we believe that there will be compliance at the uh, property line, which is basically, I believe it's a 55 DB uh, uh, operating level since this is a residential zone uh, adjacent to the property and uh, certainly can provide more evidence uh, to that to the town staff. I think they've suggested as well that given the distance of uh, 80 feet here and the buffering uh, 
opportunity given by the existing vegetation and so forth that this generator uh, location should be certainly uh, compliant and, and uh, uh, able to be installed, we hope. Outside of that, I'm not sure there's uh, a lot more to, to add here unless uh, uh, Lucas has something more he'd like to add, perhaps. I'll turn it back over to the board. Steve, I don't have anything to add. That was pretty great. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, so now I'm going to open the uh, meeting up to public comment and uh, see if anyone has a comment on the issue of completeness of the application. Okay, I don't see anyone raising their hands on the attendees or the panelists, so I will assume there are no comments, so the public comment section is closed. Do uh, any of the board members have any questions for Steve regarding completeness? I have a motion, Joe. Well, I actually just have one little question. Since you addressed almost all the comments on the uh, from the town staff, you didn't talk about the dumpster getting moved back. Thank you, sir. Uh, I had not. Um, per suggestion there is um, originally we were uh, showing basically a 15 foot zone here with our parking spaces and uh, we have a, a 10 by 12 dumpster area. I believe that if we move and add three more feet and move the dumpster back three feet, that this little zone here uh, will be ample uh, room for vehicles parked in spaces four and five here to, uh, certainly they don't have any issue pulling in, but if they pull out and then being able to exit out, uh, that's more or less my response. I'm trying to not necessarily add uh, a lot more pavement or otherwise to the site if we can avoid it and, uh, at 18 foot depth here that's going to leave eight feet uh, for that maneuvering zone and I'm I'm comfortable with that and I'm hopeful that the peer okay. reviewer would agree with that. All right uh, someone wanted to make a motion? Yeah I got it. Uh, motion for completeness be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Redtail Properties LLC for site plan review a proposed amendments to the site plan for 1226 Shore Road, U11-14, uh, to add an eight space parking lot and change the use of building B from storage to village retail be deemed complete. Second. Okay. okay, we have a second. Carolyn, did you second? Yep, I did say okay. second. Okay. Um, can you take a roll call vote, please? Sure. Mr. Bedenski? Yes. Mr. Curry? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Ms. Jordan? Yes. Mr. Hubner? Yes. Mr. Sarbeck? Yes. Chair Shalott? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Board members, do you feel a site visit or and or public hearing is warranted in this application. Do we have a choice on the public hearing? Yes. Okay. I, I'm fine with not going. I've been there before. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been there for the last application, which obviously wasn't this applicant. Um, but so I'm okay with not going and I'm okay with having a public hearing. Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, not going. Sorry, Carol Ann, I jumped on your what you were no, saying. No, I, I was trying to decide whether whether people were going to be in favor of a public hearing or okay with no public hearing. Well, can I just ask Andrew and Dan? I don't know if you guys were on the board the last time we went to this property. Are you both okay with not going? I have driven past it, but. Uh, I, it seems pretty clear what they're trying to do. So I, I feel like I can visualize this because there's not as much sort of substantive stuff happening to buildings and whatnot. But um, uh, I think it should have a, a public hearing because I feel, especially it's a, since it's a commercial space. But um, 
So yeah, I, I, uh, I'd be fine without the. Yeah, the, uh, I agree with it, Andrew. I don't. I, th I don't think a site visit is. I'm okay with that, but I think a public hearing would be good because I think there's a residential. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's it's in a commercial zone, but there's a residential uh, house next to it, I believe. All right, um, then let's begin uh, substantive review. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the applicant? Carol Ann? Are, are there any staff comments or uh, peer review comments that Steve did not address? I think he was pretty thorough in addressing the comments. Yes, Steve was very thorough. I think yeah. I got the only one he missed. <laughs> um, uh, oh, there was something about lighting. You don't have a um, photometric in this set, correct? Uh, correct. We're providing one 12 foot tall pole in the new parking lot. And uh, um, if need be by the board or staff uh, that they would want to see uh, a uh, photometric for that particular light at 12 feet. Um, I yeah, can that would probably put more in. I'd, I'd like the applicant and the board to consider the applicant just providing something in writing that analyzes it. I, I, I personally didn't feel it. It felt like you were really close. I just wanted something added to the record. Thank you. Yep, can do. Same with the sign detail, just something. Yeah, on the sign piece, uh, Lucas, I might ask for you to weigh in if you do have a, a new sign. I can't recall if you, maybe you had told me that you were looking to do something with uh, your brand uh, marketing on the sign. So maybe you're still working that through. Yeah, uh, that's, that's exactly it. We had just come up with a new logo and uh, I think at last uh, I heard they had picked the final colors uh, but my immediate impression on it is that it's going to generally be shaped about the same so this concept of saying hey move that sign over a couple feet you know it didn't phase us at all it's Maury so just to clarify um it's great that you're doing a brand new logo, but we do not have to see it. Your First Amendment rights protect you from providing us the content of the sign. Uh, we just need to know the size and the location. And the comment that came from me was that, I believe the site plan says there's gonna be a new sign in front of your new parking lot, but there was no detail that showed where it was gonna be what it was going to be shaped or lighting. And so we don't need to know what it says. We just need to know the shape and if it's lit and what the materials are. Okay. The, yeah. The, the, the goal of the Shore Road visible sign is to keep, quite frankly, with um, the adjacent businesses. So LP Murray has a great sign right there. Size, shape, the same. Uh, similar, anyway. Um, Fox and Doe, if I'm uh, citing that properly. Um, It'll be certainly in keeping with that. That's by choice. You know, I, I think it looks nice when all those businesses have similar signs. Um, but actually, um, Steve, does that plan have, uh, Maureen, did you reference a sign from the new parking lot? Yes, that I'm, your, your site plan has a note that, that is down the driveway that says there's a sign for the new parking lot. So this isn't the sign on Shore Road. And it just right. would be nice to know what that is. Okay, yeah, um, I, I, sorry, I, now that I know exactly what you're asking, um, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have that uh, for you right now, but uh, in terms of concept, I believe what we were thinking there can best be compared to uh, the previous applicant. Um, the, Dr. Zev has a sign on 77, um, there's a walkway off 77 that heads towards that building. And I believe we were envisioning something similar, just something small kind of indicating after you've turned onto the access road and found yourself in the parking lot that yes, indeed, you're at the right place to park. Um, that's 
unfortunately, all I can say in terms of concept, I certainly understand the request for something more specific and I'll get on that. Will they be lighted signs or lit signs or whatever? I would, I would prefer to have it lit. The, the, sorry, the, the front sign, if you're referring to the front sign, yes, the back Both sign. Signs. Both signs. Not, not yeah. in the back sign. Not the front so sign. So you'll just, you'll indicate that on your site plan. Uh, we'll correct that. Okay. All right, anything else? Maureen. Sorry. Uh, I'd heard, I think, in speaking with one of your consultants that there, there's some timing issues on when you want to do certain parts of your site plan. And I'm just suggesting that you may want to think that through and maybe make something a phase two and something a phase one, because then you can break up your performance guarantee. Um, so that's, that's one bit if you want to get everything approved as a phased plan, like that, that building B might be its own phase. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, I just want to make sure there's no confusion because uh, you just sealed your parking lot. They look fabulous and it's all lined with what the original site plan approval was. And those parking space lines now conflict with the proposed ramp. So maybe for next month, you could just work out that conflict. Certainly. And I think um, uh, the issue, the reason we went forward with it is that in all likelihood, we, we couldn't foresee this process ending any time. I, I, this is my first time in front of the planning board for this sort of thing. And it seemed like it was going to go on for a period of time uh, to then go ahead and make the changes that we want to fulfill the site plan and ultimately get somebody interested in leasing the space, it seemed like there was going to be quite a bit of time. So we thought the best use uh, of that parking lot right now for the foreseeable future, since without this approval, uh, we still just need it to operate the front building. So we went ahead and painted it. That certainly would be part of the plan to repaint it, you know, uh, as, as per the approval of this board. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Can I have a motion to table this, please? I'll do it. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Red Tail Properties LLC for site plan review of proposed amendments to the site plan for 1226 Shore Road to add an eight space parking lot and change the use of Building B from storage to village retail be tabled to the regular October 20, 2020 meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Second. Maureen, roll call, please. Certainly. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Uh, Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Steve, are you going to send uh, hosting duties back to me? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Are you going to stay, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> okay, board members, it's nine o'clock. We have two items left. How do I do that uh, here, uh, Maureen? Oh. Uh, just go to participants and yep. find my name. And then on the right hand side, it'll it'll say more and you make me the host. There you go. You did it. Thank you very much. Okay, you, so it's now. nine o'clock. We have two items left. Are we gonna get to both of them? Yes. You don't have to focus, right? Okay. Have some coffee. Okay, Joe Fristacci is requesting an amendment to the Rosewood subdivision to split lot 4B to create a new lot and extend the private road right of way for Rosewood Drive to create frontage for the lot. 
The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 1625 amendments to previously approved subdivision. So we'll have the, the uh, let's see, who's going to um, make the presentation? Joe, is that you? Joe, your mic. Peter Beagle. Oh, Peter, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, well, and then, um, there we go. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, letting us uh, be here tonight. Um, my name is Peter Beagle. I'm a landscape architect with Land Design Solutions, and I'm here with uh, Joe Fristacci, the uh, applicant and owner and the original developer of the uh, Rosewood subdivision. Uh, we're proposing to split the existing lot 4B, which is slightly over an acre in size, into uh, two lots. Can you hold on one second? Do you have two mics near each other? No, I think Joe's got to mute himself. Are you in the same room? Somebody's no. uh, getting feedback. Okay, try it that way. Okay. Um, so in order to split these lots, we need, to, we need to create enough frontage for both lots to have the required amount. And to do that, we're proposing to extend the uh, Rosewood Drive right-of-way approximately 67 feet down the already uh, constructed Rosewood Drive and driveway to the um, uh, to the end of the uh, end of the development, um, we've uh, in our ske uh, sketch plan the workshop um, we talked about requesting uh, three different waivers: a right of way width waiver, uh, which was taking our, the width the last 105 feet of Rosewood Drive from 50 feet to 45 feet. Uh, we asked about a road not centered waiver uh, because the existing road is not centered and um, we are actually trying to, we're moving it over slightly so we're making it better but we're already starting out with a uh, with a uncentered road that we really can't do anything about. So we're requesting that waiver we requested a waiver from the traffic study, um, thinking we have the addition of just the, the one house uh, at the end of the uh, dead end road, um, and thinking that that didn't warrant, um, didn't hit the threshold where we uh, would need a traffic study. Um, the one waiver that was mentioned by the uh, Steve Harding, the town peer review engineer, was a stormwater report and calculations. And we didn't say we were asking for a waiver from that. Um, so we, we would like to do that and ask for a waiver from that uh, based on the fact that the road is already constructed. We're not changing any drainage patterns. And we're actually, by cleaning up the edge of the road and the slight changes we are making, we're reducing the impervious area by 424 square feet. So we're, we're not changing anything and we're actually making the existing situation slightly uh, better. Um, and I don't know if we should be looking at a plan while we go through this, uh, Maureen. I don't know if that would be helpful. Peter, do you want to be the host and put your, your plan up? Um, yeah, I think that would be, uh, I think that would be good. So unless, Joe, you have any objection, I'm going to do nope. that. So I'm going to click. So once to the post, um, do you need me to talk you through this? Okay. Well, I'm just going to click on share screen and bring my plan up. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay. And the, so this color coded plan. I'm just seeing a Wait, list we're of just files. You've got to open the plan up, Peter. Um, so it's open on my screen. You have oh. to share each window individually. Okay. So go so go down to the bottom of the screen and find that share um, green button and click on that. All right. Let me. Uh, Here 
Okay, I may have. Um, okay, um, I'm going to say a new share. Yep. And is there. So every time when I open a plan, so so you can see a plan now, is that right? Yes. But when I click the page, you don't see it. So we, you don't. Yeah. yeah, you just switch to page two. Okay, okay, okay. So everybody can see this color coded plan. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the. The original, the lot 4B consisted of the, the orange and the cyan and the green, basically. And so the green represents the extension, the 67 uh, foot extension of the uh, road uh, or the right of way over the existing road up into lot 4B. And then the, uh, the cyan color is the, would be the proposed lot 4C and the orange, the proposed lot 4B. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. Um, this new screen shows you the, the blue lines are the existing drive. The red lines are how we're slightly realigning it to get it a little more in the middle of the road and cleaning up the, uh, the edges. Um, this cyan line over here is the water line that we would be connecting to. Um, we have had communication with uh, the Portland Water District. They have some things they would like us to do um, beyond this connection we're showing. Uh, the, it, it's not a problem for us to do that and we'll comply with um, whatever connection criteria they have. This is an eight inch water main. Uh, so there is plenty of water, there's plenty of pressure um, and we just need to connect uh, per their uh, direction. So we're glad to do that. Um, we had been asked, uh, a, a, another comment from the peer reviewer was, um, or not peer, I guess in his discussion with the public works director was to make sure that we put pins in these new corners. Um, and I'm gonna scroll back one plan and this plan, uh, where these arrows are, is where we would need to put uh, new pins, and we're uh, glad to do that. We'll show that on the next uh, the next uh, plan. So those were really the um, those were the the comments that we had. Um, aside from uh, acknowledging that uh, the applicant Joe will need to uh, pay a uh, open space impact fee, um, and um, I guess uh, acknowledge the fact that he has already in 2011 as part as a, a part of another uh, lot split, he has already paid the affordable housing fee. So that's um, not something that we need to worry about uh, with, this, uh, with this project. Um, and I, I, I think there it was a pretty, um, it was a pretty short list of things that we needed to um, respond to. So I'm, I'm, I, I, get, I think that's it. I, I take any uh, questions that uh, folks have. Uh, does anyone have any questions on the issue of completeness or comments? I don't have anything on completeness. I just have a couple of questions more. All right. have to do uh, it seems very complete to me. All right, before we go on, I want to open the meeting to public comment on the issue of completeness. Uh, does anybody, do any of the attendees have a comment on completeness? If so, raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, the uh, comment period's closed. Um, yeah, I only have questions that would be uh, germane to after uh, completeness is determined. So if no one has any further questions, uh, I'd like a motion. Just oh, Joe, one question. Yes. Is there some provision in this plan for uh, fire engine turnaround, hammerhead or something? 
Uh, yes. Seeing... Yes. There's an existing. Uh, there's an existing hammerhead right here, um, and that would remain. Where we are not doing anything with that. And uh, Joe actually had a discussion with the uh, fire department, and they said they have no worries about. Thank you. Ready for a motion? I am. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joe Cristacci for an amendment to the Rosewood subdivision to split lot 4B to create a new lot and extend the private road right of way for Rosewood Drive to create frontage for the lot be deemed complete. Do I have a second? A second. Great. Please take a roll call vote, Maureen. Mr. Bedensky? Yes. Mr. Curry? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Ms. Jordan? Yes. Mr. Hubner? Yes. Mr. Sarbeck? Yes. Chair Shalott? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, any quick quest any questions on uh, of substantive nature? Carol Ann. Uh, pretty basic and it's just a matter of understanding what I'm looking at. Um, am I correct that there's a substantial buffer between the two lots that is outside the building envelope for lot 4C? Um, that is uh, wooded vegetation um, and I'm moving my little uh, cursor. Yeah, that's what I thought. But um, I just want to make sure. Um, yes. And I, I guess I would add right now, uh, Joe, the applicant, actually owns this house and owns uh, this house. So we're actually not surprising any. Um, uh, we don't have an, an, a, an a butter that's surprised with uh, what we're doing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Peter, on uh, the comments from Sebago, comment number three, the applicant is essentially lengthening the roadway and removing an existing portion of the road. I read that about five times and I still couldn't get what he was talking about. Does that, can you make sense of that? <laughs> I believe what he was thinking was that we could, we have drawn the new property line, the end of the road right of way line right here. And I believe that he was suggesting if we could move that a little bit farther this way, that we could eliminate this oh, piece lever down here. Uh, but it, it actually puts us too far up into this lot with our setback line. Okay. So, um, Got it. Any other questions? Carol Ann. <laughs> Sorry. I, okay. I found the uh, public works director's comment interesting because I've never heard it before. And that is, unless this is centered, please don't ever try to make it a public road, basically, is what I interpreted that to say. Am I wrong in that? Did you, I understand that correctly when I read that? Uh, I, I, I take that to be that that's uh, potentially a, a, a strike against you, but not necessarily a um, dead in the water type type thing. This road, okay. this road was actually, the original road was in a narrower right of way. So that's why it's off center. Then when the right of way was expanded, it was expanded on one side because that's the way that that's where they had room so it's uh you know forever been uh uncentered Jim, I, i'm you... fine with all the I'm waivers sorry. you have requested so. i am too yeah i don't have a problem it seems like they were all supported by the uh consulting engineer any other uh, questions or comments? Okay, do you want a sidewalk for this? 
Should I ask if one by one? I'm, Who wants I could go either walk? way. Personally, I don't need a sidewalk, but. I don't need one. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine without one. I, I think this is pretty straightforward and well presented. So. Yeah, I'm not inclined to need one. I agree with the majority. I agree also. Okay, so it's unanimous. Um, so if there's no further questions, let's get a motion to table till the next meeting. I have um, one. Okay. Okay, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joe Fertucci for an amendment to the Rosewood subdivision to split lot 4B U34-22-4 to create a new lot and extend the private road right of way for Rosewood Drive to create frontage for a lot be tabled to the October 20th, 2020 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Great. Um, Maureen. Mr. Bedensky? Yes. Mr. Curry? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Ms. Jordan? Yes. Mr. Huebner? Yes. Mr. Sarbeck? Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I appreciate the clarity of this application. Peter, I need you to make me host again. Yeah. Uh, you just go up to my name under participants and over on the far right where it says more, you can make me host again. Yep. Yeah, I think I got it. You did. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item. The Cape, the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust is requested a resource protection permit to construct 13 boardwalks and bridges and wetlands located on the Pollock Brook Preserve, located at 498 Spurwink Avenue. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 1983 resource protection permit. Okay, we'll begin by having the applicant uh, introduce the project and we'll then uh, allow public comment on completeness. So, go ahead, Philip. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking the time. I know it's late, so I'll get right to the points. Um, and Cindy is also here, uh, our executive director. So, um, our hope tonight is to address some of the specific questions that were brought up last week at the conservation committee meeting and then to respond to the memo from the staff and our hope is to get to a point where we can be deemed complete so we can move forward with a site walk if desired and with scheduling the public comment for the October meeting. So I will start with sort of what I think the biggest takeaway from the conservation committee meeting was, which was an, a need for additional detail on the bridge design we're proposing. Um, I'm going to share my screen and show that momentarily. Going to make him hold, is he hosting? Yeah. Great. Can everyone see that? Yeah. So this is the National Park Service standard plan that we referenced in our letter and it was- Excuse me, can you zoom in on the bridge? Can I also, uh, Jonathan Sarbeck just got kicked out of the meeting. Can anybody let him back in? <laughs> I'll tell him it's a shame he had to find out this way. I wonder if his laptop died. Philip, can you hear? Oh, you got it. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's an attendee raising their hand. Oh, uh, yeah, it's. Hmm. That are we good? There we go. All right. If if that ever happens again, I'm going to bed. I'm just. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Jim, for sharing that. <laughs> All right. So um, this is the National Park Service standard plan that we were referencing. Um, 
the one difference from this plan is that we're not planning to include a railing on our bridge because the bridge will only be a little over a foot clear of the water. Um, so that's the only difference here. And we're also not planning to include running planks, which are really only needed for remote areas where you don't want to deal with replacing deck planks or areas with very high pedestrian load, neither of which is the case here. Um, and if I go down to, so page two sort of shows the, what the, the elevation of the bridge will look like, basically three stringers that will be sized appropriate for our expected load, curbs on the sides, but no railings. Um, are there any questions about sort of what we're describing there? So these span up to, these don't, what do, what do these span up to? So per the National Park Service specs, you can go up to 30 feet. And what we're proposing is two separate spans. The main one over the actual stream bed is 26 feet. And then there's a, sec a second span, which gets us from sort of the first dry area over to where it's consistently dry. That's 14 feet. That's with no intermediate supports? That's correct, but fairly hefty stringers. Is it all pressure treated wood? So we're planning to use pressure treated for the stringers and not for any of the other materials. Uh, Are you using wood or uh, like um, composite decking? We're using, we're planning to use wood for all. Of them. Um, and just to, to follow up on the pressure treated, if we do end up needing an abutment, so supports under the ends of the stringers, um, we would probably use pressure treated there as well. Well, I think it's a mistake if you're not using pressure treated or the correct deck for it. Having, having walked many years over the braid pond and saw how it deteriorated until you put the new ones in. I don't know. Generally, our philosophy there is that it's better to use less pressure treated when we can and just commit to doing the repairs and commit to sort of that, that component of the bridge. You're talking, Jim's talking about the decking though, not the stringers. Right. Right. Yeah, and so I, I'm saying that generally our philosophy is with the with the decking, it's easy enough to replace a piece of that. Um, I will say we are going with three inch decking, which is a little bit heftier and does last longer um, to partially mitigate that repair need. Huh. I'm not sure I agree, but it's just you you guys are doing it. Well. Let's remember we're going for completeness here. So yeah, you're right. Why don't, you're right. Why don't we? Uh, you're right. Let me just see if are there any? Uh, is there anybody in the audience there who wants to make a comment? Uh, I'm going to open up the meeting to a public comment. Seeing none, the meeting is closed to public comment and. Um, does anybody have any uh, thoughts on completeness here? I have a motion for the board. I, I, I uh, hold, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Go Carol Ann. I thought some of the comments from the engineer and were pretty significant and would like a little bit of information on how you're responding to those or if you have already responded and updated your plan to show the detail uh, the engineer is asking. You want to go through all the plans? I kind of stopped you in the middle. You have more plans there than that, right? Yeah, so that's, that's all the plans we have for the bridge, but I, I was prepared to talk about the, the staff memo as well, which I think is what. Okay. Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, so I think the, the biggest one is the, the site plan, the Sebago Technics recommended some additional details, especially about showing the actual lengths and locations of some of the boardwalks, as well as the what's existing and not existing. So let me switch to the, to the site plan for a second here. Um, so first, just to sort of clarify, um, I'm gonna zoom in on the top area because I think this is 
show some clear examples of questions they raised. Uh, all of the trails that we're talking about are existing trails and have been in use for a while. So it's part of the light green, right? Um, on my screen, it's yellow, but the, the dashed line. Okay. Um, yeah, that was very hard to see in the paper plan that we received. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Um, so, so all of those trails are existing trails and part of our motivation for the boardwalk locations was to stay with the existing trails. Um, as you can see, the dots aren't quite on the trails. That's because we're using GPS data for both of them and there's a little bit of error in there. Um, one of the, well, what I would view as one of the major things that Sebago Technics pointed out is that many of our boardwalks are much shorter than the actual distance through the wetland that's shown on our wetland mapping. Um, so as an example, I wanna show, a, I have a photo of section one and why we're proposing less um, than crossing that entire wetland area. Can you still see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. And do you see a photo yet? No. I think you have to go down and hit the, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is one of the wet spots that we're talking about. And so it's, you know, it's not like Great Pond or an area like that where we have full on wetland. It's just that it is emergent wetland. And what we're proposing is just to cross a relatively short section where the trail is actually um, causing problems and where during the spring it got wet enough that people starting to leave the trail and things like that. Um, so that's sort of the motivation to, to minimize the overall amount of boardwalks we're using, even though compared to the formal delinea or compared to the wetland mapping we have, it doesn't show us crossing the full wetland. Um, I think those were those were to us the key the the major comments on the site plan itself. Are there other questions on the site plan? Um, yeah. So all of these trails are existing. How do you get onto this trail system? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, let me just put a look. So the parcel we're looking at is directly adjacent to the Gullcrest fields. Um, and some of the trail network, you can, actually, you can almost make it out. It might be hard through Zoom, but um, connects through these series of old agricultural fields, heads down, the bridge across Pollock Creek is here. And then this section on this side of the road is Runaway Farm, which has been a Cape Land Trust property for about 20 years. Um, and has one connector trail that crosses Spurwink Avenue and then connects with uh, your own Pollock Creek Bridge on the other side eventually. Okay, so those trails aren't indicated on the map that you gave us. Yeah, so the map I was trying to keep to the required one inch is 100 feet, but um, using specifically the trail mapping we have Essentially, the trail at the top continues over to Gullcrest. The trail at the bottom comes up through our easement and then um, across to Town Farm. I didn't switch screens. Okay. It's going to be quite a sidewalk. Yeah. It's way, <laughs> it's way too I think we though. need one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful one. loop trail, though. That's yeah. what I'll say. It's way till it snows. <laughs> Never again. Uh, any other questions on um, for completeness? Uh, no, uh, Joe, this is Dan. I just want to compliment um, uh, Selt on uh, the putting together that RPP application. I don't know if you guys have gone through it, but it's very thorough. So, thank you. You're more than welcome.
Yeah, I took a look at this. You're talking about, you're talking about this thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is an amazing document. It is. I'm just wondering what you guys are going to do with the old bridge on page 31. That I don't know how anybody hasn't fallen from that. Well, that's what that's what we're proposing to uh, replace. replace. Good. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> does anybody want to make a motion for completeness here? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Um, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for resource protection permit to construct 13 boardwalks and bridges and wetlands located on the Pollock Brook Preserve located at 498 Spurwink Ave, U43-8-5 be deemed complete. Any second? Second. Uh, Maureen, roll call please. Maureen? Do we kick her off too? She's muted. She's more, sorry. No, it was me. I was muted. It was better that way, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert. Oh, looks like we lost. All right. Um, yeah, Ms. Sure. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Starbeck. Yes. Chair Shalott. Yes. Okay, the measure passed, the motion passes. Um, so what do you think of a sidewalk? Yes. 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 Yes, Joe. Sure. Okay. Um, wait, can you put the map back, please? Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, Let's have a little discussion and then come back to when we want to do the sidewalk. Because, uh, Jim, you started on the bridge, on the materials there. And um, so one question I had, a lot of, even in Cape, I see a lot of aluminum bridges. And I know they don't have the same nice natural feeling that wood does, but it seems like they last forever and require no maintenance. Yeah, have you guys, did you guys reject those out of hand or? We, we did consider a sort of aluminum boardwalk section similar to what we have in Robinson Woods across the end of the pond. Um, but first I would say that no maintenance is kind of a myth. They tend to have a lot of issues with the decking which degrades due to UV periodically um, and in general, our thought was if we have to replace the decking one way or another, we might as well replace with natural materials. Um, I think aesthetically, the, the wooden bridge is preferable, especially since we are just barely within view of the abutting landowner to the upper left. Um, and they've expressed a pretty strong preference to for a wooden bridge if at all possible. Um, and I, then I think last point, it's just, it's less expensive and in some ways easier to maintain because if something does break, we can fix it more easily than having to pull out an entire aluminum span and replace the whole thing. Okay. Those were our biggest considerations. I think the other, just like 26 foot span either way is a little bit tricky. We're definitely beyond sort of the standard sectional dock materials we could be working with. So, um, would have just felt like a sufficient solution and our preference for natural materials went out. Okay. Um, anything else from anybody else? No. All right. Uh, let's pick a day for a site walk. Let's try and get a nice day. Mm -hmm. <coughs> would, would anybody or everybody be opposed to a Sunday morning? I can't do Sunday mornings. Okay. Just threw it out. I could do Saturday morning. 
No, I can't do Saturday morning. Friday morning. Sunday, because I don't work on I I don't work on Sunday. So. <laughs> Let's see. We haven't got one the seventeenth. No, the twenty fourth. Oh yes, the twenty fourth. Um. Do we Sorry, want to do? do no idea what you're talking about. I my internet went south for a while. No idea. You're back. I'm back. <laughs> we missed you. We're, we're looking sure. for a day for our sidewalk to uh, Pollock Brook Preserve. Um, so how about Thursday the 1st? Or Tuesday the 29th? Either of those is fine with me in the evening. I can do either. Yeah, I can do either. 5.30. Should we say Tuesday the 29th at 5.30? Yes. Yeah, that works. Uh, does that work for you guys? Sal, so. Philip, and... Okay. I don't see anything on Cindy's calendar, but I'll let her. Yeah, no, that that's fine. Okay. All right. What time? Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. And where should we meet? I think just because of parking considerations, the easiest is the parking lot right on Spurwick Avenue at Gulf Crest Fields. Okay. Great. We'll be there. A and little one becomes a pond in the winter. <laughs> yes. Is that what you mean? Okay. <laughs> All right, so wear good shoes and we're practicing, uh, we're wearing masks and doing social distancing. Is that the regular Goldcrest parking lot we're talking about? It's the one right on the road. If you can't see Spurwink Ave, you're at the wrong parking lot. Okay, so it's the first one when you turn off Spurwink. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It, okay. Good, anything else? No? Someone like to make a motion? I will. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust for a resource protection permit to construct 13 boardwalks and bridges and wetlands located on the Pollock Brook Preserve located at 498 Spurwick Ave, U43-8-5, be tabled to the regular October 20th, 2020 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Maureen. Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. Mr. Hubner. Yes. Mr. Sarbeck. Did we lose him? No, Jonathan, Mike. He's, he's muted. I, I unmuted, sorry. Yes. And Chair, Chair Shalott. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you both. We will Philip. see you. Maureen. Yeah, I need hosting duties back. Oh. Yep. Thank you all as well. Thank you very much. All right, well, I lost my agenda somehow. So, oh, the <laughs> <laughs> next item paper? is... Uh, Planning Board Digital Remote Operations. Yes, thank you, exactly. Any discussion? I just Maureen. have a question for Maureen. Yes, sir. How did Carol Ann jump Jim in the alphabet tonight when you were doing the roll call votes? <laughs> she, went, she went to Greeley. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That is what happened. I just, I'm so used to being after Carol Ann that I'm like ready to go and then all of a sudden Jim got in there. So. I have like three of these lists scattered all over my house and here and yeah. <laughs> 
Sorry about that. I will. I'll work on my alphabetization. It's fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. No, I, I don't mind. Um, I was trying to remember when our first Zoom meeting was. Was it in March? A, April? a decade ago. April. It was April. Yes, because we canceled all the March meetings. Seems like forever. <laughs> doesn't it? It does. It really it, does. It really, really does. I was trying to remember like when we didn't have them actually. It when uh, do we still have to keep doing these? Uh, yeah, the council just so you know, the you know, the council is we I just got the word from uh, my boss, the town manager, that council decided we're just gonna keep going with the way we're doing things. Um, we're right now on our third scare in the building. The first two, oh, really? yes. I'm just letting you know that this isn't too much of an abundance of caution. The last two were fine. We're hopeful the third one will be fine, but um, yeah. Yeah, well, Paul's gonna bring a lot of fun. We've already had two at our daycare, so you know. I can't wait for the election. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I do meet people in the parking lot if you're just missing. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you want some social interaction? <laughs> uh, what's the status with um, now that they've done the town, the uh, the, the open space there that the uh, uh, sorry village green village green. Yeah, yeah. What about the building? Are they actually? We're going to start building, building. I thought they were the planning on that. Permit system. has been issued. The applicant is getting ready to build. There's just a few minor things to clean up with the performance guarantee, but my understanding is everything is is falling into place. Okay, I was just curious because I driven by there recently. Well, I don't know if you heard, but we had uh, three residents of the town very very generously donate money to upgrade the flagpole. Uh, one of the residents is a member of this illustrious yeah. board. So which of the three arms did you donate, Jim? <laughs> one with the marine flag on it. I got the first five feet, I think. No, the first, <laughs> first 10 feet. Well, yeah. That's very generous of you. It looks really nice. It's uh, very nautically themed. Yeah. And I have, this, I have the, um, the, the uh, flags all purchased. They're, they're oh, right yeah. behind me. Yep, really? so, um, you know, the, the, the generous donators have said they want to be there for the, the raising of the flags. So we're hoping that we'll do that once the, uh, the park has been officially accepted by the town council. There's a couple of minor things that we do want to have done before we take ownership, uh, but everything's on track. Oh, Will there be some sort nice. of ceremony when we take ownership? I'm yeah. hoping. I'm, I, I, like I think it would there. be really nice if we could have a flag raising as part of um, the ownership. We just have to see when that's all going to happen, fall into place, and you know. But but we have had some talk about maybe doing something, you know, half an hour before council meeting. So mm -hmm. uh, once I know, I will uh, publicize it. Does one of the flags have Joe's face on it since he was the chair of the planning board and it all passed? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> You know, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> I like it. I would purchase that. I'll make one for town. you, John. <laughs> I've been hanging on your front it'll, porch. Yeah, it'll fly outside my house. <laughs> Our dear leader. <laughs> so it's much longer, you know. Yeah. Really? Oh, oh, what? Yeah, it ends. December is the last one. And then Jim takes over. I don't know. We're going to have meetings that are going to last like 15 minutes. Just boom, boom. <laughs> right, he's an engineer. Fast. Yep, yep. Uh, boom. Unless you want to jump and be uh, jump over Jim and be chair there, John. Yeah. What? 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 Carlin, you were muted there. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Someone mute her. <laughs> um, are we, right. do we have that meeting next week still? Yes, yeah. so it starts at 7. Um, I'll probably send that stuff out tomorrow. You've got it all already. There's only one piece that you don't have. It's a one-pager, so 
um, we'll just dive into it next Tuesday. Is that right, Mr. Chair? Yes. All can right. I ask, can I I ask one question on that? And, yeah. and the reason I'm asking, what is our charge from the town council with regards to looking at that? Because last time we sort yeah. of started talking about the policy aspects of it. and So any amendment to the zoning ordinance or the subdivision ordinance, you have to, the town must provide the planning board an opportunity to provide advice. So uh, you're an advisory board as, as the planning board, you have probably the best uh, perspective from a long-term, long planning perspective, and you bring expertise to the review. And I say that from my, um, my staffing committees over the years, I find it very interesting that planning boards have a certain perspective councils have a certain perspective and both groups add value to ordinance packages. So you have a real, uh, you have a very important role to play, uh, but in the end you're advisory. So you should review the ordinance, you should make uh, the changes that you think is appropriate from a planning board perspective, and then you send it off to the council and they review it as well. Uh, Maureen, is this in the nature of a workshop or do we, do we have public participation in our- this this is scheduled as a special workshop. And as you know, there is no oral comment taken at planning board workshops, but members of the public are free to provide written comments. And as I receive them, I will send them to you. And I'm also adding them to the file, which it is, I'm on the biggest clip right now. I'm gonna have to break it into two pieces soon. But we do have a public, we do go through it at a meeting once and have a public hearing on the correct right? yeah. once you yeah once you get an ordinance draft that you're satisfied with you do have to hold a public hearing before you make a vote to recommend it to the council so what we recommend will be exposed to the public before we approve it yes yeah. okay yeah and then and then whatever you recommend goes to the council and then the council also has to hold a public hearing before they vote for any kind of adoption. So is it fair to say like if we get public comment that um, is overwhelmingly against having short term rentals, but we might see it as okay, well, it's within the zoning ordinance. Do we split the baby or I mean, could we split the baby saying like, look, the public doesn't want it, but we think it's okay or we don't think it's okay or or doesn't it matter? We're just advisory. So ultimately it's going to come down to town and, council anyway. Yeah, this advice is not short term rental specific. So anytime you get um, public comment that is um, completely in one direction, I would always suggest you remember there's other people out there that are going to give you public comment on the other side. Um, so I have online, I think it's the May town council meeting. Um, we scanned in all the public comment that was in writing uh, that was received from October 2019 to May 1st, 2020. And then I was going to do a second package that was the May 2nd to the present. And I can send that to you as well. And I think if you read that, what you will see is um, a vast amount of public comment on both sides. Yeah, and, and all that stuff will eventually go to the town council anyway, correct? Correct. That yeah, they've I, seen it already, they'll see it again. I'd also argue that, you know, we're an advisory board. It's not our job necessarily to poll public sentiment and just make a decision based on what the majority of people seem to want. You know, we have a more in-depth view. We spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff and how the zoning ordinance works and you know I think ostensibly we're a group that you know while we're still not specialized in this we have spent a lot of time thinking about it so I think it gives us a perspective that maybe not you know a person thinking about it for the first time doesn't have yeah that's fair Maureen can you comment um maybe this was already said at some point or pointed out, but is there something specifically called out in the um, the new comprehensive plan that talks about short-term rentals? There's not much. And in fact, um, 
again, we, we got to be careful that you don't get into any substantive discussion tonight. But one of the things that was referred to the planning board that you're going to be looking at next week is to also amend uh, the one recommendation in the comprehensive plan regarding short term rentals. So yeah. um, okay. I would ask you to ask that question next week and we can talk about it more. Yeah, it was more going to be like, could you provide it prior to or during or whatever? That was really what I was Yeah, at. what I've done is I have created a draft that I will provide you that I'm hoping will be useful for discussion purposes, but it's a starting point. It's not a, oh, you just have to take it or leave it. Okay, that's good. And we're going we're gonna to pick up the meeting where we left off, I guess, last time. That's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Not that I remember too much, but <laughs> I didn't want to say that, Jim. But I'm glad you just. Yeah. Did. So I, like, <laughs> I don't think I know where we left off. <laughs> no, do I? Well, there was a decision not to start with the definitions, and you jumped into the meat, which is perfectly fine, and then decided that the definitions were important. So I'm going to leave that up to you. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Joe, All right. Motion. Yeah, I want to. Oh, let me just ask Maureen. Uh, do you want to review the uh, de minimis changes that came through on? Uh, yes. Is there any reason so, to do that? Um, on 287 Ocean House Road, the property owner has asked for some amendments, and um, the chair decided that under the ordinance, there were three changes that he could approve as a de minimis change. Uh, one of them was to eliminate the uh, skylight on the front closest to the north end. Um, a second one, I'm going to forget these now. That was for the uh, gable, to, to construct the gable over the entry. Correct, correct. And there was another, there were two. Oh, to leave shingles up in the gable. Thank you, that's right. So there were two things the applicant, the owner requested that were not considered de minimis. One of them was to change the size of the window on the Scott Dyer Road side from 48 inches to 36 inches. And um, the other one uh, that he's talking about but hasn't submitted a formal request is to convert the lumber rack to a lumber storage shed. So the applicant's been advised to prepare to go back to a workshop to go over these changes. Okay. Okay. Ready? Motion yes. to adjourn. <laughs> Ready. Motion we adjourn. Second. And a second. Second. Yeah. All right, Mr. Bedensky. Yes. Mr. Curry. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Jordan. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hubner. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Sarbeck. Yes. Pierre Shalot. Yes. I am hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're consistent though. With us. <laughs> you <want to> see <laughs> my... <laughs> hey guys. All right. See All right. you next Bye. Thursday. See you next week. Thank Bye. you. Good Bye. night. Bye.